are gassing up. We got the trailer on here. Head into the racetrack Sunday morning. I wasn't necessarily scared at Harold. I was kind of confused. You're out of your comfort zone. Everything's dark. Um, it's just a lot. It's overwhelming for lack of better words. I felt like I was more in control when I first passed. Obviously, it was super slow, but um, it just felt it was a good um, boost of encouragement, I guess, just to get comfortable. The second pass, now I had already, or the third, second pass for today, that's the third pass of the car. And now I'm kind of feeling like I know what the car is going to do. I, I know. Or I, I kind of know how the power is going to feel, how it's going to respond a little bit from the, the first two seat times. So the second one, I was able to stay in it a little bit more. And I actually hit the rev limiter on uh, in first gear, and then that's when I threw it in the second. So I actually forgot to shift it. I was actually trying to, I think, physically go faster, so hold it out. I wasn't really worried about shifting it as much. So John said this next pass, we're going to throw it on the CO2 and actually try to just hold it out and let the shifter uh, uh, shift itself. Uh, that last pass I felt a whole lot better way more comfortable not as worried um, necessarily I also had Randy uh, check a couple things with my helmet so that were bothering me in the back of my head not physically but mentally uh, I was worried about just trying to get comfortable so when you're uh, driving the car actually with everything on and seated in you have to kind of get comfortable and that way you're not thinking about that stuff um, the steering wheel being off is bothering me I do have a piece of tape where it's kind of marking where it's straight at so that's I had to adjust the tape I think I need to adjust a little bit more but that's also slowly uh, working out these little kinks where when I go up to do a burnout and everything I'm not thinking about which way the steering wheel is because I can just look right at the tape these are little things that you normally don't even realize that you just take for granted like when your steering wheel is straight in your daily driver you know it's straight but a lot of times steering wheels are crooked in a race car I want to fix it just don't have time now so I'm working it with a piece of tape um, just getting rid of these little tiny bugs um, that you're thinking about uh, sorting them out uh, that comfort situation the helmet we figured out that my Hans um, I was wearing it too far forward and so that was making me kind of sit like this it needed to be rolled back a little and now I feel like I can see a lot better and I actually have more control over my uh, what I can see so it's little stuff like that is what I didn't even realize was bothering me in the first you know one or two passes that the third pass in the car we're kind of sorting it out so um, the next time we go up we're gonna let the air shifter shift it and um, I'll have a little bit more grasp on uh, I guess what to expect and everything. So hopefully it's just gonna get better and improve from here. I'm showing y'all the in-car footage. John, of course, did on his channel, the exterior footage and the actual pass. It's more traditional because again, I'm still trying to focus, trying to listen to these guys. All these guys around me have a lot of knowledge and are teaching me a lot of stuff. And I'm not trying to worry so much about YouTube as just making sure um, I'm here using our time wisely and efficient and really trying to learn at the fastest pace possible um, and just kind of let John handle the YouTube. But I'm going to do these like in car and kind of what I'm thinking and stuff that's not going to be in John's footage. So we're going to let this thing cool down for a minute and then we're going to go back again.
Personal best, 595. Baby, we'll be here till 595. Hood Thank was not happy. Ah. But the hood, as soon as we went into the fives, the hood said, screw it. We're done. We're out of here. And it exited to the left field. Uh, me and Spencer's going to get this thing loaded up, get it in the trailer, and uh, make our own way back to Wilmington. I mean, we have been talking about all it. that footage for y'all on his uh, channel this week, uh, just like the previous stuff has uh, been. Um, that last pass was extremely good. You see from the end car footage, you see what happened. Obviously, the hood come off. Uh, Randy had actually already warned me. We have been talking about it since the first outing that you need to put fasteners on the front of the car. Um, the wind's going to get underneath it and lift the hood. I felt like with it being a steel hood that it won't end blow it off. balloon up and um that's the reason why we needed to hold the front down but then i was thinking that since mine is all steel and it has a little bit of the support left in the front of it um that it probably wouldn't balloon up i wasn't thinking that the wind would come underneath there grab the whole flat panel and just peel it backwards i was literally looking for a balloon an arch from a uh, driver to passenger side is how this whole time my brain has been thinking and what happened was instead of it it did not balloon uh, the hood is perfectly fine left to right but it literally just peeled the whole thing up into one flat piece it went up in the air it ripped out the um uh bolts on the uh at the firewall i'll show you all that in the next video when we get the car in the garage or whenever i get the car out the trailer um, and it just peeled, peeled the whole thing back, just ripped the bolts right out of the hinges. It did not touch the windshield. It didn't touch the roof of the car. It didn't get none of the car. So um, y'all gonna have to bear with me. We're gonna have to get a hood on the way. We've got to fix the radiator hose. We've got to get a diaper or a belly pan on this thing. Um, so I put it into the 590s for y'all and uh, we have got to get some stuff squared away on this. I know a lot of people want to see it at the track, um, but that's how you start abusing a car and a car starts falling apart is when you don't um, take your time to make sure everything's right. So y'all gotta, y'all gotta bear with me. I'm going to tell you that we have, um, I have three weeks off, um, from racing this car, taking this car to the track next week is dig or die. Um, I'll be with John, um, in Rockingham trying to get, help him get a win. And then the following week after that, he is heading to Knoxville, I think. And that week he is spending doing, uh, family stuff. And then that that weekend is his race in Knoxville. So that puts three weekends for me that I'm not taking my car to the track. So initially that's three to four weeks, whatever that falls on uh, business days um, to try to get all this stuff squared away. And then hopefully after that, I don't know what his schedule is on the, after that one, uh, he's got to look into it. But hopefully after that, we'll have everything buttoned up and we can get it back to the track. And then what we're gonna do next, for anybody that's asking, is we're gonna move into the trans brake. We did not do the trans brake today. Everything was foot brake. Um, and we will start seeing, how, we'll start getting more comfortable into the fives. So I think we can hold it into the fives now that I've already been there. And we'll start getting more comfortable, more consistent. We'll improve the burnouts. We'll get the trans brake working. Uh, we have a few issues that I will go over. Um, to address, we have a fuel pressure issue where the fuel pressure is now spiking. We're not dropping too low. Now we're on the opposite scale and it's spiking. But in the Holly, it does not look like it is uh, 
um, actually spiking. It almost looks like the sensor is not reading correctly. So we're gonna swap out the sensor. I got a CO2 adjustment I need to make uh, that we've seen with the shifts. Just some odds and ends. So uh, everybody I know keeps asking, when is it going to track? When are you going back track? When are you going back track? Three weeks. We're off for three weeks with this car. Um, Y'all make sure you head over to John's ch channel, subscribe, smash the notification button, because obviously he's gonna be carrying a lot of the footage since he's helping me. It's just easier on me to focus on what I'm doing. Um, I will catch y'all in the next video. Thanks, y'all.